everybody for, for joining us. So just to say about uh, myself, so I'm um, Juan Cruz and I'm, a, I'm an artist. I'm a professor of fine art at Edinburgh College of Art here at the University of um, Edinburgh, which is from where I'm speaking today. Um, I've also been an art critic. When I left art school, I did quite a lot of uh, writing for um, Art Monthly and, and reviewing exhibitions, and I've written quite a bit about art as well, which is maybe where my, well, probably certainly where my interest in this in this award stems. And I am one of the uh, one of the one of the kind of founder members of the of the board of the International Awards for Art Criticism, together with um, Henry Merrick Hughes, who is the honorary president of AICA, um, Lewis Biggs, who is currently. Uh, was director of Liverpool Biennial, um, then Ferguson Triennial, and Ling Min, who is an independent, uh, currently an independent uh, professor in, in, in Shanghai, but was uh, a, affiliated to Shanghai University. Um, so the IAC is an international um, award for art criticism, and it invites uh, submissions of uh, critical reviews of exhibitions that have taken place in the preceding year. Um, it was, uh, we started about 10 years ago, this is the ninth edition, it's an annual prize. And the origins of the prize um, actually stemmed from, from another prize, the John Moore's Painting Prize. Um, so uh, I became involved with the John Moore's Painting Prize when I worked in, in Liverpool in 2008. And uh, just before that, uh, Ling Min, um, a colleague from Shanghai, and Louis Biggs, who was then the director for Liverpool Biennial, um, had established a, a version of the John Moore's Painting Prize, which is one of the oldest um, art prizes in the UK. I think it's about 60 years old now. Um, had established the version of that prize in in China, um, and one of one of the, the I suppose the rationale for that was uh, to try to understand a bit more about uh, painting in in China and, and, and contemporary art, I suppose more more generally, uh, and to introduce some of the principles of the John Moore's Painting Prize to to that to that country. Uh, and, and key principles of the John Moore's Painting Prize, um, uh, I suppose the key principle of the John Moore's Painting Prize is the, is the anonymity um, of the entry. So the idea that people who are entering the prize um, uh, enter with, with an image, enter with a, with a painting, but not, not their name. And, and this stems from Sir John Moores, who founded the prize back in uh, the um, 50s. Um, in the UK, who was um, a wealthy man who made a lot of money from the from the football pools and from Littlewood's catalogues, so he was a, became a philanthropist, and founded that he was an amateur painter, and he was convinced that he was not getting accepted into painting exhibitions because no one knew his name and that it was a closed shop. So he set up this prize, which had this anonymous submission. Um, sorry, it's a bit of a long story, but so so when when we when we had the the painting prize in in, in China, that went very well, and we had lots of entries, but we were quite. Um, I suppose, surprised and disappointed at the um, scarce critical response that we had to the prize. You know, the, the, there was very little debate or discussion happening in printed media um, around the prize, um, uh, which seemed, seemed a shame that, you know, that we, we were tending to see regurgitations of our own press releases um, and started to think about how we could foment a bit more um, uh, dialogue around critical writing um, uh, at that time, also sort of because of the because of the two locations of the prize between China and the UK. So the first iteration of uh, what became the International Awards for Art Criticism uh, was a critical writing prize that was attached to the John Moore's Painting Prize. So we invited submissions for reviews of either individual paintings or collective uh, the, the whole kind of show um, that, that were exhibited either in in Shanghai or in Liverpool for the John Moore's Painting Prizes in those two countries. And we did one. One prize like that, but it became apparent really, really quickly, actually, almost all, the, the, almost immediately, that uh, that really, if we wanted to kind of support and think about critical writing seriously, um, the John Moore's Prize, uh, really interesting a prize as it is, was was a bit of an impediment to that in the sense that we wanted to kind of encourage writing that was more international, um, that dealt with a wider range of art forms, and that dealt kind of specifically, I think, with the exhibition as as. Uh, you know the, the means by which art, art works, and you know art is instantiated in the world at a particular time and in a given in a given context. So the very next edition, we we shifted. We called it the IA, the International Awards for Art Criticisms, and um, what we've asked for hasn't really changed since then. We asked for people to submit a re internationally a review of an exhibition taking place anywhere in the world during that previous year. There's a series of dates um, between which the exhibition should have taken place. 
Um, uh, we asked for the submissions to be either 1,500 uh, words or uh, uh, 2,500 Chinese characters um, and uh, maintain that spirit of anonymity of the John Moore's Painting Prize. So we put together a jury made up of uh, UK uh, sort of international judges, uh, actually, um, uh, who uh, all of whom speak uh, English and some of whom are Chinese speakers as well. Um, and invite entries in either English or Chinese uh, to be submitted from, from, as I said, from anywhere, anywhere in the world. So it is an international prize, but it is based between two, two places, two specific places, London and, and Shanghai. Um, for the first seven years, um, uh, seven or eight years of our, of our operation, we were supported by the Minsheng Bank. Um, as part, and the Minsheng Bank have the Minsheng Museum in, in Shanghai and, and actually in Beijing. Um, and they supported the prize uh, financially and administratively. Um, and then last year, uh, we changed sponsors, so we now work with Fudan University in Shanghai, who carry out a, a, similar, a similar function. Um, yes, I suppose that's about it. In terms of the, 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 the criteria for the prize, I mean, the, what, the, way, the way it works is that we invite, we invite submissions um, over the past few years, we've had between two or three hundred submissions in English and two or three hundred in Chinese. We always kind of compete to see who gets the most um, submissions in each language. Uh, and the first, the first um, step for us, having identified uh, uh, the jury, is to uh, whittle it down for them. So we, we tend to kind of e edit the, the submission internally. We put a panel of people together who whittles down the submission down to about 30 or 40 um, in each language. Um, and then those are circulated to the judges. A complication, well, a complication, one, one of the things that we do is, of course, translate all the English submissions into Chinese, the Chinese, Chinese ones into English, um, so that the judges are able to read them in the language which they feel most comfortable reading in. Um, and then we convene. Over the last couple of years, we've had to do that online because of COVID, but prior to that, we would convene uh, the judges in, in China, in Shanghai, uh, and we would have two or three days of deliberations where the judges would discuss um, the entries that they that they'd received, uh, and then we would come up with a with a list of runners up and a winner and two and two and two second prize winners, um, if you like. Um, in terms of the criteria, th that's been really interesting because I think those those discussions that we have, well, were in, in order to to judge the work, um, effectively develop the criteria for us. So, so in a sense, I, we, we didn't start out having, you know, specific criteria, uh, you know, for what kind of what we were looking for in critical writing about art. But what's really interesting about the judging process, and we try to reflect this in the publication that we produce every year, is that it simulates debate about precisely what it is that people are looking for um, in critical writing. And uh, we, you know, we discuss we discuss many, many things about that, whether it's you know, how significant it is to situate the work within a particular context through the criticism, how important it might be to uh, uh, describe the work. Um, you know, are we looking for critical writing that is for people who've already seen the work and who want, it, who want to kind of think about it with someone else's words? Are we, writing, are we doing critical writing for people who won't have access to see the work and therefore there's a kind of descriptive dimension that becomes quite important? Um, uh, how academicized might the critical writing be? To what extent are we looking for other critical references, extensive discussions about whether footnoting is an appropriate thing to do in critical writing about art or not. Um, and we do receive a, a really broad range of entries from what you might think of as being a review that you, you, you know, you'd, you'd imagine you could see in a, in a newspaper or, or a magazine to um, reviews that are more, um, let's say, sort of um, uh, creative or kind of formally innovative. Um, there, there is really quite a broad range of approaches that, that, that people take to the writing about about art, and, and, and this is something that, that, that stimulates discussion among the judges around around the, you know where, where this is going and what we might be looking for and what we might be trying to encourage. Equally, the criteria about the work being uh, about an exhibition that has taken place in that in that year um, stimulates quite a lot of discussion about you know what is an exhibition. Um, and uh, and again, you know, there there are there are some things that are very kind of you know mainstream. You kind of understand an exhibition. Sometimes that you know maybe it's a monographic exhibition, a large monographic exhibition, a small monographic exhibition, perhaps in a commercial gallery. Sometimes people treat um, a whole biennale as an exhibition. So there's a really broad range of, of 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 subjects and themes that people write about. 
at the edge of that might be sometimes um, uh, activism, you know, certain ac activism um, manifestations, things like this that people kind of in a sense want to think about as, a, as, as an exhibition. Um, and of course, during during COVID, we, we we received quite a lot of reviews that were based on um, online work and online presentations. Um, and so that that's that's really interesting for us actually to see to see what it is that people are thinking about writing art criticism about. Um, uh, and we get quite a lot of inquiries in advance of the prize. Can I write about this? Can I write about that? And 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 generally, we encourage people. Um, to, to, to do that, to submit, um, and in a sense, it really then becomes um, a, a job for the judges to determine whether they, they, they you know, they're willing to consider uh, things that are on those on those margins. Generally, the judges have a really kind of generous approach to that and are interested to see things that might be, you know, stretching um, our boundaries a bit. Where we where, where we're not terribly tolerant is in in the word in the word length, which which might sound a bit kind of stick in the muddish, but. Um, we have a kind of 10% tolerance either way for the 1500 words or the uh, 2500 characters, um, but, but we, do, um, we, we, we don't consider things that go way above the word limit or are way under, um, because it just seems very difficult then to compare, at, at least, you know, so that is the basic criteria that holds quite, quite firm, which one could argue is, 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 is it arbitrary, it's, it's not really, it's, it's, it's kind of, I suppose it's the length of an extended review um, that does uh, encourage a certain kind of succinct uh, uh, approach. Um, Maria, I think maybe, I, I don't know, if, uh, I'd welcome some questions. I, I, I could talk for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you answered one of my questions, which was kind of what uh, could we consider as to be an exhibition review, but it really seems that, like you said, judges are generous on that, and they, they, there's quite a broad definition of what an exhibition review, of what an exhibition in this case is. Uh, yeah. it needs to be contemporary art exhibition. Um, uh, yes, although, uh, yes, contemporary art exhibition, mm -hmm. but contemporary, I think, you know, could be defined as something that is happening now as opposed to, to work that's now. I mean, I think some, something that's really important is, is this emphasis on the exhibition. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes we have submissions that, are, that use an exhibition um, as, as an excuse to write, not as an excuse, but as a kind of, as, as a, as a trigger to write about maybe an artist or a movement or something without without particular attention to the exhibition and and uh, you know that that's quite nuanced because of course sometimes people are writing about work uh, to which they bring some prior knowledge you know they might know quite a lot about the artist they you know may, may be an opportunity to write a, a, an exhibition review that that that, that um, benefits from from the writer's prior knowledge and, and and engagement with the work with the work in hand and that's absolutely fine but it it often feels a little bit if it, if the work doesn't actually address the instantiation of the work, you know, be it kind of formally in a space or be it contextually within a particular, you know, place or particular kind of context, um, it often feels a little bit as if we're not really reading an exhibition review, but but more of an essay about something else. Um, and, and and that's something I think I think to bear in mind. It doesn't rule things out, but it's just mm -hmm. you know one of the things that that has come up in in, in terms of the discussion around what we might value. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I have another question about the criteria. Um, that is, um, can does it have to be a review, a piece of writing that's uh, specifically write, uh, written for this award, or can it be previously published? Uh, no, it, we 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 ask people to submit something that's specifically written. So we 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 don't um, we don't accept previously published material. Um, and and that's for all. There's all sorts of reasons, and we we have debated this quite quite extensively. But one of the things that one of the things that previously published material um, benefits from is editing, um, and so it feels sometimes a little bit unfair to be considering work that has been already edited and already gone through an editorial process in relation to work that maybe that maybe hasn't. Um, so so we don't accept previously published material. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the uh kind of one of the prizes um is being published in exhibitions reviews annual um and th does this editing process or editorial help um come in uh, at this stage for for the winner it, and is it the only the first prize that gets published because there's first and second prizes or and the, the older winners or all the shortlist list, listed people get published uh yeah could you tell us a little bit more about sorry let me just get the book and i can okay. 
sorry. This is the IAC8 oh. publication. So, um, if, so no, we pub we publish uh, we publish the shortlist. So we publish the ten shortlisted entries in Chinese and the ten shortlisted entries in um, in English in um, in this book in the International Reviews um, Annual um, every year. So we have twenty of the reviews are published both in Chinese and in and in English together with the text from the from the judges. So we have this nice sort of dual language publication that includes some images as well. Um, mm. And uh, yes, it, th this is a difficult publication to produce because of course we have we have the text in, 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 in either Chinese or in English and we translate them into the other language. Um, and there is a certain amount of editing support that happens at that at that stage. So we ask for all when people enter the competition, we ask them to um, uh, give us also the rights to publish the the the, the piece within in the IAC um, catalog in the IAC book in the in the um, in the exhibition reviews annual. Uh, yeah, that, that's a really great opportunity to to have uh, published your work and and uh, such a fantastic publication. Um, yeah, we have one question in the chat. Um, can an abridged average version of a published, say, 6,000 words review be submitted? Ah, good. <laughs> um, so the, the, the rule is that, that we should, that, that we don't, we don't accept pre-published material. Um, I think in a British version, I think when, when we've had, when we've had inquiries like this, um, what, what we tend to ask for is for, if there is a query like that, is to have full disclosure. Uh, and so the judges are then, and, and, and maybe it might be useful if, if one is submitting something like that, um, an abridged version, it might be useful to maybe say something about what it is that is different or original about the work in the submitted form that makes it a substantially different piece of writing from the form that, it, that from the form in which it's already been published. Um, I, I would say that would be what we do, and generally we would have a discussion um, among the kind of um, among the board about whether that was that was acceptable or or not, and 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 put it to the judges as well. Thank you. Another question: um, Is it preferred to write then about temporary or current exhibitions and about the context itself more than permanent? Could festivals and fairs be also included in this category? Yes, I, th I think the key thing is that whatever someone is. Whatever is being written about should have been in the uh, well, public domain, I suppose, or should have been there during the preceding year. Um, you know, quite often people write uh, reviews of exhibitions uh, that may include work that was made, you know, 50, 100 years ago. I think that, I think that, that the key thing is 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 the exhibition. Um, it's you know, it wouldn't be. You know, I, I, I think somebody could probably make the case for writing about uh, a public monument that had been there for, 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 for many, many years, but happened to be there during that year. I suppose what we would be looking for then is um, some articulation of why within within that writing about why it was relevant to write about that now, um, as opposed to you know, as opposed to any other time, because I think that would give it the, that, that sense of contemporaneity that, 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 that we're kind of looking for. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, if um, you feel free to also unmute yourself if you have any, any more questions or you know doubts, comments. Um, one more that comes to my mind is um, about the um, who's elig eligible to to enter, and uh, the can the people who enter can be um, of any nationality based anywhere in the world. Um, is do they have to have a record of having their work published? No, yeah. but n not at all. And, and yes, it can be anybody from anywhere in the world, and there's no requirement for them to have um, uh, any any previous experience. I mean, that's one of the key things about the anonymity of the submission. Um, and we are probably, you know, reading work by people who are you know, professional. Well, I don't think there's that, I don't know if there's such a thing really as a professional art critic, but who are, you know. People who write and publish regularly, um, and then sometimes we're, we're reading work by people who have maybe never been published. Um, and and you know the the, the prize winners, it, it really varies. You know in terms of the age and the the, the kind of background. Um, that's been really really interesting to see. That, you know the range of people who actually kind of make it through. I mean it's sort of 
it's in in a sense, you know, I, I suppose for people who are experienced readers um, of, of of criticism and, and and writing about art, it's sometimes fairly clear, you know, where, where someone you know is clearly quite experienced in writing and where someone isn't. But but that it's not always the case, and and you know, it, no, that that can be really varied. There's there's no there's no kind of predetermined background or experience that people should have in order to apply for the prize. That, 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 that's quite an important aspect of it because that does throw up some quite interesting um, dynamics. And, and they, 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 yeah, they differ in different countries. I think, I think some, some nations have a more, maybe a more academic tradition in relation to writing about art. Others have a more, a less academic tradition, a more kind of um, journalistic tradition maybe. Um, and and we, we, we have a range of, range of entries of, of, of all kinds. Uh, and I can see on the website that um, you can, on the IAUC website, you can find past winners um, and the reviews. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Yeah, so you can um, also go and check the um, yeah the past uh, winners and, and shortlisted list, reviews. I'll put and the link in the chat. And we have more questions uh, from Patricia. Would you say the exhibition we choose to write about matters in terms of subject, or are you more interested in how the review articulates it? Um, I think we're more interested really in how the review articulates it. I mean, um, it, 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 this is interesting, well, interesting to me. We, we, you know, some, there are years where we have lots of entries about the same exhibition. Um, and so there are some key exhibitions um, uh, that, that, that seem to attract a lot of critical attention. Um, a few years back, there was a, a Kabakov exhibition in Shanghai, uh, for example, and, and, and it was interesting. It was the first time the Kabakovs had shown in Shanghai, so the, the work was familiar, the context was not. And that there were lots of reviews that came through um, um, about that. Similarly, Animism, Anton Frank's exhibitions attracted a lot of reviews. So there are key kind of... Um, uh, the, um, Certain biennales attract a lot of a lot of reviews, so, and that's interesting that we have quite a lot of people writing about an exhibition. And that, in terms of the the, the exhibition reviews annual, that that's fascinating as well because you know the, the successive editions of that give us an indication of the kinds of things that people are being attracted to write about. Um, so that's that's interesting. However, very often we also have reviews about. Um, um, Number one about a review about a tiny exhibition in a small space in Cairo that was one of the runners up that none of us knew about, none of us knew the artist, and yet it did it did very well because there was something about the way in which the review um, kind of but may, maybe both acknowledged the fact that people may not be aware of this work, but 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 acted as a real real kind of catalyst for engagement with it. Um, and so there is a sense in which we're looking, you know, we are um, appreciating the engagement uh, with the exhibition. As well as you know, I have to say sometimes you know the quality of the the writing, the you know the clarity, the the um, succinctness, that you know the use of language um, is is really important. People, you know, the judges aren't aren't ashamed to say how much they might have enjoyed the way something was written, um, as well as um, you know the critical insights that it afforded. Um, I think that's all. I think that's an important part of it. Uh, another question: Is it recommended to have footnotes, endnotes, bibliography? Um, it, it's not required. Um, it's not required, and, and um, that, that I, I, I would say I, I would say that it's not. I mean, I wouldn't. You know, it's not an essay. It's not a kind of academic essay that's being submitted. And I would say, uh, I suppose my advice would be that unless unless it feels really necessary to provide the context through a footnote, that it's probably not that that necessary. But but we wouldn't kind of, um, uh, you know, we wouldn't rule something out because of it, of course. Thank you. Uh, one more question, and um, Juan, if you can, uh, I can direct your attention to the chat. Uh, it's quite a long, long one, so you can look at it. Within the context of such an underpaid and precarious profession like art writing, how do you think about what do you think about the labor politics of asking people to submit pieces on spec to apply to a prize which only compensates a single winner? Uh, in this case, there's uh, kind of four prizes that are awarded. Uh, to, to clear that, uh, is this not contributing to broader labor issues, contributing to instability in the field? I mean, there is instability in the in the field of, of art writing, and there's a lot of precarity uh, in the arts, um, and we are clearly not not resolving that. And we're not, you know, that's not that's not the you know, the ambition. What we what we do want to do is is try to stimulate debate around. Um, 
what we think is the importance of critical writing, if we think what we think is the importance of, of dialogue around that, and 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 the prize, um, the prize feels a little bit. It is a little bit of a kind of maybe a, feels like a bit of an old fashioned kind of mechanism, but but it it has been for us quite an effective mechanism to gain a bit of traction and to develop networks, um, and certainly within. Um, um, it's been very interesting in Shanghai and within China to develop um, a kind of uh, a bit of an IAC family uh, of, 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 of folk who, who have become networked through the IAC and have supported opportunities, further opportunities for writers to become engaged um, in work that, that in some instances has either paid itself or has facilitated them to, uh, through their publication and through those networks to achieve other kinds of employment. Um, but yes, I mean, I, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure whether we're, I, I, I think it's a bit, it would be a bit much to say that we're contributing to broader labor issues. I don't think we're resolving them, um, but I think we are providing a platform for the celebration and um, um, dissemination of, of, of critical writing and, and, and opportunities for publication. Yes, the, the, there's one prize. It is quite a generous prize for the winner and for the runners up. Um, but uh, but yes, um, it, it, it's a good question. We're not we're not we're, you know we're not we're not. Uh, it would be difficult uh, to think about how we would avoid. I, I can't think of a way in which we would distribute the funding that there is more more effectively and, and actually you know with the money that we have distributed among the six hundred entrants would would not amount to very much anyway. Yeah, thank you for for the question and thank you for answering. Um, there's someone someone joined very recently a few minutes ago uh so but um i mentioned at the beginning the recording will be uh published uh, on our channels uh, very shortly most probably in the next couple of days uh, tomorrow or the day after um thank you so much are there are there any any more questions um about the awards submissions criteria uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think these are all questions uh, that we've had for today. Um, so we'll, I'll, yeah, I will be wrapping up this event. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Juan, for presenting, talking to us about this award, and um, as well as to to everyone who participated. Um, yeah, I hope this event kind of gave um, provided more clarity or more confidence for people to apply um because at the end of the day that's kind of what uh, like like you mentioned um the award wants to contribute to um kind of more people enjoying and um art writing and kind of popularizing it as well yeah. um, and i think and i would encourage obviously i'd encourage people to apply you know we have we have people sometimes who apply uh, several years in, in a row sometimes successfully sometimes not but it i suppose it is maybe a you know, a lot of people write reviews of exhibitions, a lot of us do, maybe without a view necessary to getting them published, but I suppose this is maybe an incentive for some people to just, you know, to get something, um, you know, in, into a form that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is more shareable maybe than it might be otherwise. Um, so yeah, so thanks everybody for their time as well. And any, any the, there's a really, the, the, the website, the ISC website that um, uh, Maria has shared has got really good, um, um, an FAQ section which, which, which answers, you know, further questions and, um, 